Well, it's a lovely sunny day here at Common Farm and I am pricking out seedlings by the hundred. It's one, it's, I, it's a game I play called Tet Seedling Tetris. And one of the things I do while I prick out my seedlings, I'm a flower farmer. So I count my seedlings because if I have too many, I don't have enough room for them. So I've got to grow the right number of plants for the right number of space. And not surprisingly, sometimes I find I have too many. So what do I do with the too many? Well, at this time of year, end of, towards the end of March, I pot up the spares for our village charity plant sale. So if you're new to the channel, please do subscribe, press the bell icon, and we'll tell you when we've got more clips coming up. And if any of the tips and tricks are useful, you can always buy me a coffee, or better still, join my club. Normally, my clips have ads running through them, but we are talking about charity plant sales. And a lot of the people I talk to every day, week, month, through the year, are joining me in holding a little plant sale wherever they are in the world to raise money for their local horticultural charity. So this might be for a village gardening club, for the local primary school. The prison might have a gardening project. The hospital might have a gardening project. <coughs> there might be a gardening project nearby which people I talk to all the time can help by holding a tiny plant sale and this is not a competition to raise the most money or win any prizes. This is just about communities helping out their neighbours. So there are no ads on this clip at all because it would seem it wouldn't make sense that I would be encouraging people to raise money for charity and I am raising money for my charity. Local charities are village churches, the village hall, the treatment bag, which is a charity which supports people going through chemotherapy and our local horticultural charity, which is the, the growing space in Wincanton. And it would seem kind of counterintuitive if I was busy raising money for charity on the one hand and then taking advertising income on the other. So these clips about the charity plant sale, no ads. But I hope you're interested and engaged enough uh, to have a go yourself and maybe join in. It's a very simple premise. So here are the chilies and peppers that we're going to grow to eat the fruit of which the fruit. Oh, I can't speak English. We will eat the fruits of these plants ourselves in our family. But I have spares, so I've potted up the spares and they're just mixed pots of chilies and peppers and they will be for sale at our village plant sale on the 11th of May. And the way that we do it is really, really simple. We have a tiny committee. There are seven of us, neighbours. Uh, some, some of us know each other better than others. Um, and I invited people who I know are doers not necessarily gardeners, but people who, when they say they're going to do something, will do it. Uh, also gardeners. And we get together this, we're going to have our third meeting next week. So this doesn't take an enormous amount of organisation. The idea is to keep it very simple. We have booked the village hall uh, because it's a village event. And as a village event, it's not costing anything, but you could have a plant sale on a table outside your back door. You could have a plant sale uh, by the village church. You could have a plant sale anywhere you like. It doesn't have to be your village hall, but we are gonna use our village hall. And this is the way that we're going to lay it out. And I'm only gonna show you this because I think it might give you an idea if you're worried about how to do a plant sale. You, if you feel like this is a big amorphous job, here are some ideas. So we've got a big rectangular village hall. It's about the shape of the paper. We are going to line up the tables in the village hall, using the village hall tables.
This is not drawn to scale, by the way, but we're going to make a big space for people to be able to put their plants on. We will have another table in the middle where we're going to have plant identification books in case we don't know what something is, we can look it up. Uh, and we can put the kind of the stuff, the, the rubbish, if you like. Underneath the tables will go lots and lots. And we've all been collecting useful boxes, trays, so that if people buy lots of plants, there's something for, to take them home in. So we'll put those under the tables all the way around. And then the day before the plant sale, so ours is on the 11th of May, and uh, I've been emailing the village mailing list. I've been putting uh, information in the parish magazine. I've put something on the village Facebook page. I've been putting information on my Instagram feed so that people can find out about this plant sale from lots of different ways. And I've been saying to people, please, A, while you're digging over your gardens in the spring, do pot up any spare seedlings or cuttings that you might not want in aid of our charity plant sale. And I've said, please drop them over to the village hall on the Friday afternoon, if people can, we'll be there to help take them. But of course, it's a bring and buy plant sale. It's really, do you remember when you were little, your mother used to do village bring and buy cake sales, or maybe they didn't, but anyway, the bring and buy sale is a brilliant idea because most of the material is then brought to you by the customers because it's a charity thing. So they bring you their spare tomato plants, for example, and then buy something else that you've got. So if everybody brings their plants over, most of the plants will be delivered on the Friday afternoon and we will then set them up in sections. So here, for example, we might have house plants. I don't know what people are going to bring, but we'll arrange them and they'll fill up the space. So this might be house plants. And I'll put a big sign there, a laminated sign saying house plants, so that when the shoppers come in, they can spot them in the distance and go and find them. And then here, we might have herbs. I'm going to bring the camera up so you see. And so on. Here we might have annuals flowering. Annuals. And this section along here, maybe perennials. And then over here, we might have peas and beans. And so on, filling up the whole space so that, and they're big laminated signs so that people can see as they come in. This is the way in for our plant sale. I will show you this close up. So here, teas and cakes. So that people can come in, they'll see that there are tea and cakes, they'll do a first tour round and get the basics that they want. Then hopefully they stop, have a cup of tea and a piece of cake and talk to their friends and neighbors. And then powered by sugar, they go around and spend a little bit more. We aren't having an entrance fee. We charge a basic fee for all the plants the same price. So whether it's a tiny little single rather sad looking snapdragon or a great big house plant or some glorious thing, they're all two pounds. Everything's two pounds makes it much easier for the helpers to work things out. And we will take cash, of course, 
but we will also i've organized uh one of our one of the committee has been has very kindly organized that we can take a card payment and we've got two machines that will take card payments so that if people are going around and they haven't got enough cash people don't always have cash these days we've got a system of taking a card payment if you can organize that it means that people can pay however they're not stuck with the only note that they brought they can pay with a card so all the plants are two pounds each we've got people helping who will be taking if people arrive at the beginning and they've brought plants we've got two people who can take those plants from them at the beginning and take them round to we've got a section here where the spare plants will be sorted by the helpers and then they can be put onto the tables to fill up the spaces as we sell. It's quite efficient way to do things. Um, the tea and cake, we don't charge a particular fee. We just say make a donation. And that way we find that we uh, make a bit rather more money. <laughs> it's all for charity, you know, the more the merrier. The other things that we will have, there'll be other stalls. We've got a, a, a it's a, it's, it's like a lucky dip, a bran tub. And that's not just any old lucky old dip. It's going to have amazing prizes in it. Higgledy Garden, so far I've got prizes from Higgledy Garden. Back, batch of seeds, Niwaki tools have said that they'll give us some really fantastic things. Um, Rachel Pedder Smith, whose mugs I'm always drinking tea from, she said that she will give something. Rose and Lions, I'm not wearing her earrings, but I often wear earrings from Rose and Lions in Bruton, has said that they will do something. The Village Pub is giving supper for two. And I've asked a lot of other people I talk to regularly on my social media, so hopefully we'll have really amazing prizes. But of course, we can't put all the prizes in the lucky dip. They're going to be too big. So we'll arrange the prizes so you can see what they are. But you pay your two pounds for the lucky dip. You put your hand in and you can either win a chuppa chup lolly or you pull the chuppa. Basically, everybody gets a chuppa chup lolly. You pull out your chuppa chup lolly and it might have attached to the handle one of these brilliant prizes. So we're gonna have a really good lucky dip. We're also going to have information from the parish churches to say who they are and why we would raise money for them. The village hall to say who they are and why we would raise money for them. The treatment bag, one of the charities we're raising for, the one that's supporting people going through chemotherapy and the growing space in Wincanton, which is a fantastic place where people can, who really need the calm and experience of growing, it makes such a difference to so many different people. Uh, for example, there's a young mums group at the Balsam Centre, which is another place in Wincanton that we raise money for. Um, and one of the things they do is go and harvest vegetables from the growing space and learn about cookery and growing with working with vegetables cooking with veg and so the growing space are, gr are growing quite a lot of the plants that we're going to be selling on their account so it's a really nice friendly everything goes round and round and round and the community meets each other in lots of different ways with this with this space so so all of those people are going to have somewhere to show off to give information aware about what they are and what they do and then the other thing we might have, we're definitely going to have, is a book stall for a secondhand gardening, uh, interior decorating, possibly cookery books. And again, they will be making a contribution. You can pay what you like for them. And I hope I will have moved up the field by then. So I expect I'm going to have a stall selling off vases that I don't, for one reason or another. I don't use anymore and again they will be make a contribution and the idea is to raise as much money as we possibly can for these four small charities 
So the layout is really, really simple. We've timed our sale. It starts at 9.30 in the morning. And, and we've said it'll finish at one, but I bet you we're finished. I've done this. We've done this sale many times over the years. And um, it's a bit of a bun fight at the beginning. <laughs> There's always a queue of people ready to go. And it's a mad rush. And all the plants are sold incredibly fast because they're good value. But that's also because we're making, we're save, raising money for charity. You know, people might buy the, the tiny little something just because it's for charity. And um, it's always really, really good fun. There's a real buzz about it. The 11th of May is a good day if you're in the Northern Hemisphere and you're not much colder than we are because it's really kind of prime get your garden ready season. The other thing we're doing at ours is we have a village flower and produce show at, at the end of the summer, at the beginning of September. And so Higgledy Garden has incredibly kindly given us enough giant sunflower seeds. They grow to 10 foot. Giant sunflower seeds. So we're going to be handing out little packets of sunflower seeds to the village children so that they can then compete to win the tallest sunflower competition. So it's good to kind of, if you've got village events that go on or community events that go on through the year, it's great to join them up. It's a great way to advertise the next one, but you know, we're all, it, again, it's not a competition. Let's join up the activities because it's fun. <laughs> you never know who you might meet. Anyway, if you are thinking of having a plant sale, you don't need very many plants. I have, you could raise $50, a hundred bucks, a hundred euros, 25 pounds. There are tiny horticultural charities around which have, do enormous amounts of really, really good work, but have no budget for PR or marketing. They are just quietly providing a place for people with mental health difficulties, for uh, young people to learn interesting skills, for people who really would like to do something different, who really, really benefit from getting outside in the fresh air and don't necessarily have the opportunity elsewhere. Life-changing work. And so if you raise a little bit of money, having a little plant sale for your local horticultural charity, we hit Common Farm Flowers, we hit with our social media and our newsletter and so on. We, hit is the wrong word, we engage with 100,000 people a month. If 1% of those 100,000 people held a plant sale, that would be a thousand small plant sales. And if each one of those flat plant sales raised 500 pounds, let's ballpark it. I expect we're gonna raise in the region of four grand, but you know, somebody might raise 25 quid. All of it is as valuable as the other. So if a thousand plant sales raised somewhere between 25 pounds and 500 pounds, that might be half a million pounds, half a million, whatever your local money is, going into small local horticultural charities, which do astonishing amounts of good work. And given that we live in a world where we feel very, I don't know about you, but I feel very out of control all the time. I feel so I can't, you know, the news is terrible. People are being horrible to each other over here and they're being horrible to, to each other over here and even more horrible to each other over there. I turn on the news and within five minutes of people being horrible to each other over there, I know about it and I see the pictures and I'm shocked and horrified and, I'm, and I feel disenfranchised. I feel as though I can't do anything about it. I can, though, do a little good thing. I can hold a small plant cell. I'm good at growing plants. I, I grow plants. You know, I'm really lucky. It's something I do with very easily. <laughs> I look at seeds and they germinate. Aren't I the lucky one? So therefore, I should use some of that good fortune and sell some of the plants for charity. 
And then while the horrible things happen across the world, over here and over here and over here, over here, it doesn't mean I feel any less awful about the horrible things, but I know, I know that a small good thing is also happening. And if a thousand people around the world on the 12th of May or near the 12th of May do a small plant sale for their local horticultural charity, then that's a thousand small good things happening. It's worth it, isn't it? Anyway, we've called the process the Common Good Plant Cell. Thank you very much, my club members. I have a fantastic club here on YouTube and um, the club members are very, very excited and uh, have been incredibly enthusiastic about this idea. And a lot of them have engaged with it one way or another. So thank you, clubbers. Anyway, the clubbers had the idea that we should call it the Common Good Plant Cell. So if you'd like to find out more about how we're doing it, do look at the my page on my website. And my colleague Nicola is collecting. If you are going to have a plant cell, you can email Nicola, club at commonfarmflowers.com. Tell her where you are and a tiny bit about the charity you're raising money for. And she is going to, we are going to put, A, we're beginning to, she's only just, <laughs> there's a limited amount of time. So she has had time to begin to make a list on the website. So there's a list on my website of where all of your plant sales are. Obviously only the ones that people are telling us about. So you can, you don't have to tell us everything. We'll just put the ones that we've got the information about. And we will also be sharing information on Instagram. So if you have an Instagram handle, where you're holding your plant sale, when, who you're raising it for, and your Instagram handle, really helpful because we will then share it. And we hit, I think by then we'll be hitting 50,000 people on our Instagram, which is amazing, really. I don't understand, anyway, lucky us. So let's use, let's use that social media and do a good thing. So that's my top tips um, for plant sales. Charge the same amount of money for all the plants. It doesn't matter what they are. It's a really great idea. It just makes adding up everything simpler. So we're doing two pounds a pot. If you make teas and coffees a donation, rather than say it's two pounds 50, it's less admin. It means that somebody can put a bit more in the pot and then, you know, come back and have another piece of cake. And it, it's just less admin. Um, Make it a bring and buy sale so that people can bring their spare plants and as well as sell yours. More the merrier. Have a little group of people who can really help you. I'm going to have, um, I haven't done them yet, but I'm going to have badges. We've got quite a lot of people who are going to help, not just on the committee, uh, but I've got some friends who are really good, know their plants, and they are going to be the people in the middle here, advising people, telling people what the plants are. And then some of the committee will be walking around helping people and they're going to have badges on saying here to help, which I think is a really good idea. Even though my aprons are all very worn out, they will all be washed and ironed and the people behind here will be wearing aprons because then they've got somewhere to put the money. <laughs> Cash. We've got two... Uh, card payment machines and I'm going to set up the card payment machine in one place so that I can send people to the card payment machine uh, if they haven't got cash which is reasonable in this day and age. We're gonna have a really fantastic lucky, lucky dip and I, I have a thing about a lucky dip or a tombola or anything and I think, and I have actively said this to the committee, I've said, let's not have dusty bottles of Madeira from the back of the cupboard. Let's not have stale chocolates from Christmas. Let's see if we can get really good lucky dips. Because I think that's fun. It's a great added bonus. Um, have people who can take your spare plants and take them around and then rationalise them. Otherwise, what happens is people bring... And it's not, they're not being, they just don't know how the system works. So they arrive with their spare plants and they just put them down anywhere on the tables and then it gets very confused. Do make some laminated signs that say vegetables, 
herbs, perennials, whatever, and put them so that people can see what they what you've got. We will have plant sale signs that we'll put up on the side of the road coming into the village just over a week before. So the, the plant sale's on the 11th of May and our signs will go, which is a Saturday, so our signs will go up just before the previous weekend. Put them up too much, too long before and people kind of ignore them. But you need to give people an option. They need to take time to go, oh, it's next weekend. It's next weekend. It's next weekend to get their heads around it. Wherever you hold your plant cell, if you anticipate a good number of people coming, be honest with yourselves. If, you're, if you've got a few plants and it's not going to be very many people, you don't need to worry too much about parking. But one of the reasons we've done the village hall is we don't have parking here for enough cars. But the village hall's got big parking and overflow, so that's great. But I need to, that reminds me, I need to talk to Barry and, um, and Kelvin and see if they will be the parking this way, madam, people, steward, that's the word. Um, and the other thing we're going to do, sorry, I've been talking for hours now, is um, we are going to have a live on here. So normally my lives at fives are club members only, but uh, for anybody who wants to ask questions about holding a plant sale, we're going to hold a live. And I think it's the 11th of April. We'll schedule it and it'll be 5 p.m. 11th of April. And if you have questions about it, you can post it, post them with this clip or email club at commonfarmflowers.com or I will be putting up a message about it on my Instagram at a short here and on the community page nearer the time, just so that people know it's coming up. So if you have questions, you can post your questions there. These little tiny pots, look at that. So today is 24th of March. So this has got six weeks. These are going to be really nice sized plants in six weeks time. So don't look at your garden and think, oh, I've got nothing. Look at your garden and think, wow, imagine how big those seedlings would be in six weeks and I could have a really good plant sale. Have a look in your local free magazine or look locally and see where you've got a small horticultural charity that might really appreciate some support. And why don't you hold, and not even why don't, and you could, you do, you too could hold a plant cell. Anyway, it's a thought. Uh, if you are going to have a plant cell, do email club at commonfarmflowers.com. Where it's going to be, who it's in aid of, which charity it's in aid of, date, and if you have an Instagram handle. Thank you very much. And then come along, do come along on the live on the 11th of April. Right, I've got more potting on to do. And then I really need to get out there and finish mulching my beds. Bye. So here's the layout of the village hall. We're going to have people coming in here, past the teas and cakes. We're going to have the big fancy lucky dip here. And then you see how we've done the layout. That's really, really simple. If you've got good, uh, good size signs, it really helps. And then the loos in our village hall are up the other end. But that's a really nice, efficient layout. You must keep your teas and cakes away from the plants, obviously, for health and safety reasons. And I've been putting out chilies and peppers. And anything in a round pot <laughs> is for the plant sale. No, not these sweet peas, but things... I've got a system where if it's in a round pot, I know it's for the plant sale. And if it's in a square pot, it's for me. And everything then has to survive until mid-May. But imagine how much bigger they're going to be by mid-May. They're quite, I mean, they're just, this is six weeks away. There'll be cobia scandens. Those are cobia. There'll be aubergines. <laughs> These are gypsophila. Artichokes, delphiniums, all sorts of goodies. 
Chinese forget-me-not, perennial flocks, all sorts for the plants out and for me.